Hi guys, how you doing? My name is David Fine. Uh, as you can see, I love butterflies and moths. And today I'm going to go over some of the scientific ways that you can tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth. A lot of people have misconceptions that butterflies are pretty and moths are ugly. Well, that's not always true. In fact, I'm going to show you some very interesting things on some beautiful moths, first of all. But, um, you know, actually show you the difference between a butterfly and a moth. Let's get to the video. All right, guys, one of the first things we're going to do is I'm going to show you this box of absolutely stunning, stunning creatures. All right, when you look at a box like this of insect specimens, you're going to see there's some very obvious butterflies like the blue morpho. Everybody knows that the blue morpho is a butterfly. Um, and then you'll see some pretty obvious moths, like this Promethea moth. Very, very clearly a moth. And people, most people would guess if I were to put those two in there. But if I were to show you this beauty right here, is that a butterfly or a moth? Now, for, for you avid insect people, entomology people, you'd know what this is. But there are some absolutely stunning moths in this box and there's actually some very drab butterflies okay so guys what i'm going to do i'm actually going to show you the differences the scientific anatomical differences between a butterfly and a moth the first big difference guys is the antenna butterfly the latin name for a butterfly is rosalophora that's a big fancy word right the latin name which means clubbed antenna, clubbed antenna. If you look at this viceroy, at the tip of the antennas, there are a nerve bundle at the very, very tip that is larger than the rest of the antenna. In fact, this hair streak might actually be a better example. You can see the, how the tips of the antenna have a little club at the end. Now moths, on the other hand, are heterocera. So this beauty right here, this is not a butterfly. This is actually a moth. And, and heterocera actually stands for straight antenna. And as you can see, the antenna on this sunset moth, this Madagascar sunset moth, are straight. There's no club at the very end. It's just a straight line. Now, some moths have really, really cool feathery antenna, like this male Promethea moth. And you can see, I'm gonna zoom in there. The antenna on some silk moths or saturnid moths is, are absolutely spectacular. And these, these are actually organs that pick up female sex pheromones. And so moths will use these big feathery antenna to find the girls, okay? Now up here, I've got a couple moths these are Hemaluca maye, the buck moths. And you can see the this female here on the right has a perfectly straight antenna on the top. There's little tiny hairs on them. But you can see the boy, he's got these real super fuzzy, fuzzy antenna here. And that is what they use to sense the female's pheromone. And so that's a major way, guys. The main difference between a butterfly and a moth are their antenna. So now we've got a couple species, a couple families that are, it might be a little difficult. Like pyarids, for instance, this is a butterfly group and their antenna are a little tougher to tell because the club is not so pronounced. Um, but hesperids, the skippers have really big club antenna. So those are pretty, pretty cool, pretty easy. And this Arctic butterfly up here, look at the big clubs at the end of his antenna. Super big clubs on his antenna. That's the major, major way that you can tell them apart. Now, I'll show you another way to tell a butterfly and a moth apart. One of the other major anatomical differences between a butterfly and a moth, guys, is that butterflies fly, when they fly, they actually flap all four wings. So all four wings are flapping, both of the forewings, both of the hind wings. Moths, on the other hand, 
only fly with their four wings, their front two wings, the top wings. The bottom wings are actually hooked on with a little tiny hook. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually going to show you on this Sphinx moth species, the little hook that I'm talking about. Okay, right there, there's a little dark little hook. And what that what happens is the hook from the forewing comes down and hooks onto the hind wing, and it actually kind of trails it along, and they just flap with this forewing. But because it's hooked on right here with this little appendage right there, the, the, the hind wing flaps as well. But when you're mounting a specimen, guys, it's actually one of the things that makes it a little challenging sometimes to mount a moth. Okay, there, there's that hook. That's actually a good view of the hook. Look at it. Look how big it is. It comes all the way down. Let me see if I can show this off a little bit. All right. Now I've got the, the entire hook is showing now. So when this hook comes down, it latches on to that hind wing and, and makes it flap along. And when you're mounting a moth, a lot of times this hook will actually get in the way when you're trying to put that hind wing where you want it, it hooks on and makes it very, very difficult. Another difference, guys, a lot of people don't know this, but butterflies actually don't hear. They don't have ears for sure and they don't have the ability to pick up vibrations the same way that we would do and we would consider it hearing. Moths, on the other hand, actually have an apparatus on their body, and I'm, I'll, I'll try to show you. I probably won't be able to show you on this, but this is actually a moth. This is the Faithful Beauty moth. And the Faithful Beauty is, is our mascot of our channel, by the way. And moths... Moths actually have on their thorax, see if I can get it focused, something called the tympanic membrane. And I, it's right behind one of the four, one of the legs. In fact, I can't show you on this specimen. Actually, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some images of a tympanic membrane from another specimen. Check this out. This organ right here, guys, on a moth's thorax is actually something that they use to make sound and they can actually hear using the same organ because it, it actually creates sort of a rattle and some moths can actually be uh, it can actually be measured it can actually be heard and arctiid moths are the main group of focus this group right here the tanukids and some of the wasp moths are actually have great tympanic membranes and actually make a lot of noises and use those noises uh, for several reasons, one of which is to find a mate. The other one is while in flight at night and they pick up a bat echo radar. The bat uses a little uh, kind of like an echo radar to, to kind of send a little chirp out and they can sense where the moth is at night and they, that's how they hunt. And the moths actually will use that little tympanic membrane just make a sound and throw the bat off so he can miss. And uh, that's one of their defense mechanisms against bats. A lot of people don't know that. So guys, butterflies are deaf and moths can hear. Pretty cool. All right, one of the classical differences between butterflies and moths is that people believe butterflies fly during the day and moths fly at night. And for the most part, that is true. Uh, we have here a sulfur butterfly, very much a diurnal spe species. They only fly during the day. Um, other butterflies, you know, the skipper, for instance, they they tend to be a little bit more active in the afternoons and some of them even into the evenings uh, before the sun goes down completely. They're actually more active later in the afternoon or even into the early evening. Now, I don't know of any completely nocturnal butterflies, but there are a whole bunch of diurnal moths. And so here's a couple of examples, guys. This is of the Faithful Beauty, Composia fidelissima, and a related species from Costa Rica. These are day flyers. 
They will come to lights at night, but they fly during the day. Same thing with this Madagascar sunset moth. This is a day flying moth and even the day flying buck moths. Guys, buck moths only fly during the day. Now, most moths do fly at night, like our autumn maris, for instance, but a lot of our sphinx species like this uh, Eumorpha fasciata and this Eumorpha labresca, these guys fly at twilight and actually visit flowers, can be seen visiting flowers at twilight nectaring. But for the most part, guys, butterflies do fly during the day and moths do fly during the night, but there are some exceptions. All right, another difference, a lot of people accuse moths of being hairy, that, oh, moths are kind of hairy and they're ugly. Look at these big, long hairs on the wings and on the body. And I think I'll show you a couple more examples, even on the sunset moth. Look at all the hairs on this thing. Uh, and, and for the most part, guys, that's accurate uh, in terms of the way they look, but I can tell you right now, butterflies actually have a lot of hairy like uh, little scales as well. But the truth of the matter is guys, that there are no butterflies or moths that have hair. In fact, uh, hair is actually something that has a follicle that comes out of uh, a mammal. Uh, insects don't have hair. These are actually scales much like the butterfly scales on their wings that make up their color, they're just elongated in certain areas like on the body and the thorax. And so moths aren't hairy. They just have longer, wispier looking scales. And some butterflies do too. Finally, guys, just curious as to your thoughts. Are butterflies pretty and moths ugly? Well, you be the judge. I mean, we've got two butterflies here. Our sulfur on the left. And this bracelet on the right, is this bracelet ugly or pretty? Comment down below which you think. Let me show you the underside of this guy, it's pretty cool. Now, that is actually very pretty, but as far as color goes, they are sort of drab, all right? Now, this moth right here, a lot of people would think that's a butterfly, but look at the antenna. There's no club on that antenna. This is a moth, guys. And look at the beautiful, beautiful coloration and pattern on these, these hind wings. Um, check out one of my absolute favorites, the Gaudy Sphinx, Eumorpha Labresca. Look at the colors on these wings, guys. Stunning creature. Bright pink on this moth. How about, talk about bright pink. Look at this flower moth. Ugly or pretty, you decide. I think that's quite pretty. Now this is a butterfly, hair streak. Yeah, we've got our blue Morpho, he's obviously pretty. But both of these moths are obviously gorgeous. Um, Automaris, comment down below, is Automaris pretty or ugly? Here's a favorite, Propona omphali. It's a male, it's two-tone iridescent blue butterfly, absolutely stunning. We've got our Viceroy, which is Kind of a more of a brownish orange color, but still pretty. Skippers, it's a butterfly. Pretty or ugly, guys? A lot of people would consider that a small little ugly little thing, but I, I like skippers. They're one of my favorites. Uh, we have our Promethean moth. Pretty or ugly, guys? Comment down below. Madagascar sunset moth. That could be, guys, one of the most colorful Lepidopteran in all of the world. I, I don't know if there are more, if there is a more colorful insect. In fact, let me show you the underside of this thing. It's worth another minute or two. Look at this thing. This is an absolutely stunning, stunning creature, guys. That's a moth. That is a moth. So pretty or ugly, I think that's a, a pretty, pretty moth. Uh, now we have these moths. Now I can I can see how somebody would say that this big female buck moth is ugly. Look at that big old abdomen of hers. Uh, I I get it I get it. Uh, but how about this one? Here's a butterfly. Pretty or ugly? Now I'm partial to Lepidoptera, so I don't think that any of them are ugly. But guys, I hope this video shows you the differences between butterflies and moths, the anatomical differences, but also guys that moths 
are pretty too. Guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I've got plenty more action where this is coming from. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. And this is a playlist on how to curate a scientific collection. So guys, take care and let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Check out that beauty. Bye now.